This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. We end today's show looking at another case that set off protests and demands for justice, the police fatal shooting of Wen Rosario, a 19-year-old Bangladeshi teen who lives here in New York City, in Queens. A warning to our listeners and viewers, the story contains descriptions and footage of police violence, including sounds of gunshots. In late March, Wynn Rosario called 911, asking for help as he experienced a mental health crisis. Two NYPD officers arrived at the family's home, one of them shooting Wynn at least four times, less than two minutes after entering his house. The NYPD claim Rosario came at the officers with a pair of scissors when they fired at him. But now, police body cam footage has been released. It shows Wynn was standing on the other side of the kitchen, several feet away from the officers. They've been identified as Matthew Sanfraco and Salvatore Alangi. The officers first repeatedly tased Wynn. His mother, Nothan Eva Costa, attempted to shield her son, begging police not to shoot him. One officer is heard yelling, quote, Tell her to get the F out of the way. This is a portion of the body cam footage. You can see Wynn's mother begging and pleading with police officers not to shoot her son. Notan Eva Costa, an immigrant from Bangladesh, spoke at a news conference outside New York City Hall last week. These police were grown men with guns. They didn't have to kill my child. I tried to protect my son. I begged the police not to shoot, but the police still killed him. Wynn's younger brother is also heard telling the police officers Wynn was having an episode and didn't even know what he's doing. This is 17-year-old Ucho Rosario at last week's news conference. My name is Ucho, and Wynn was my older brother, and I miss him every day. Wynn wasn't just my brother. He was, he was my friend and someone that I could talk to and a role model. In the morning, he would usually wake up before me, and when I woke up, he used to give me a big hug. Alangi and San Francisco stole that hug from me, from my brother. Wynn had a strong sense of right and wrong. He would always try to do the right thing. He was determined and disciplined. When we first moved to the country, we didn't really know what basketball was. And when we used to play basketball, people used to make fun of us in the court. So Wynn spent months training himself so he could become better than the people that he played with. And in a few months, he became better than the people that played for their whole life. The people that are supposed to serve and protect us are the ones that's killing us. The police was so aggressive and reckless that they could have killed my mom and me too in our own house. If someone, if, if anyone that wasn't a cop did what Alangi and Francesco did, they would have already been in jail. But yet, they're still collecting their paycheck from the city like nothing happened. Wynn's family and social justice community organizers are demanding the officers be fired and criminally charged. For more, we're joined by New York City Councilmember Shahana Hanif, co-chair of the Progressive Caucus and the Task Force to Combat Hate. She's the daughter of Bangladeshi immigrants, the first Bangladeshi-American New York City council member. Welcome to Democracy Now! It's great to have you with us. You were the one of the people at the news conference. Tell us more about what happened. I mean, how many times when someone is in a mental health crisis, their family members call, Wynn called himself and said, I need help. That's right. What we've seen and learned from the family is that Wynn had called <laughs> 911 in a in an acute mental health crisis and as soon as officers arrived two officers arrived on the scene but we see that they were 
they were upset. Their tone was that of cruelty. And right from uh, going up into the into the house, uh, meeting Wynn and his brother and his mother, they shot him. They killed him. He needed help. And what they did instead is kill him. And explain. I mean, Ucho says it very clearly, Wynn's younger brother. I mean, Wynn was only 19 years old. Ucho says, they could have killed me and my mother. I mean, they were wrapped around their um, uh, uh, Wynn's mother, uh, put her body in front, and they kept saying that he, she should get the F out of the way. She didn't want him to be killed. Right. And no mother should have to experience this pain. We have seen one too many times, uh, Mohamed Ba, Amadou Diallo, um, the, the way in which police have murdered black and brown folks in New York City. Uh, and Notan Iva Costa's um, uh, shielding her son is, is such, an, is such a, a poignant image of um, what it means to to black and brown mothers when police is is responding at the scene. Um, instead of asking to, uh, to uh, understand what had happened um, or saying that we are here to help, saying anything to just assure the family that they were here um, in response to a call, um, they they ignored. They use expletives to um, curse out the family. Um, it is not okay uh, what took place. And right now, we're seeing uh, the family demand justice and accountability. So Ucho says that he and his mother were treated like criminals. Explain. Right. Uh, again, the the response from the police. And also after the murder, uh, having to sit through interrogation as if they had been the perpetrators of this of this crime, um, and then uh, not to get a, a word of sympathy from the mayor or the administration. And what we've witnessed from uh, our top uh, police executives is harassment of journalists, harassment of everyday New Yorkers, and even elected officials. They should be doing their job. The mayor of New York, Eric Adams, is a former police officer. Um, has he spoken to you? You're a city council member. You are Bangladeshi American. This family is Bangladeshi. You spoke at the news conference. No, he has not. And this is, this is consistent with how he has treated working class people. He made a campaign promise to expand New York City's mental health uh, response team in uh, situations like Wynn Rosario's, and they have failed. They have failed everyday New Yorkers. Uh, families like Rosario's uh, will not be calling 911. Um, and that is, that is uh, a direct result of this incident. And also, the Bangladeshi community is one of the fastest growing uh, working class uh, family, uh, working class uh, face of uh, New York. And right now, we are reeling with the pain of uh, the lack of empathy, the lack of uh, really seeing the mayor show leadership uh, um, as to what was committed by his NYPD. Can you talk about, um, overall, how the city police are supposed to respond? They get well over 100,000 mental health calls a year. How should they be responding in a case like this? I mean, this one clearly identified as a mental health crisis. Sure, and that's where uh, that's where uh, activists, advocates, and elected officials like myself, progressive caucus members, are saying we need to be um, better attuned to what the needs are of folks calling nine one one. What we learned is that. The Rosario family uh, had not been new to this precinct, um, so someone like him should have had should have signaled to the NYPD or that precinct that hey, we need to bring in some social workers or um, some mental health practitioners so that he gets the full assistance that he needs on demand. Other cities have shown us um, the way to do this. New York City has a very small pilot called Be Heard in in some uh, zip codes, so we can we can be expanding that program, we have not. Um, 
and what we what we do consistently is send the NYPD in in situations that demand a mental health response, um, and that just should not be the case. They are not equipped to uh, to provide the de-escalation needed. However, they could have de-escalated. Um, they are trained. Police officers are trained to de-escalate. They did not have to tase him as many times as they did shoot him at all. Um, there are other parts of the body. If they were truly threatened by uh, Wynn um, in that moment of him holding up the scissor, they could have done uh, many other things that they have been trained to do to de-escalate that would not have resulted in Wynn dying. Um, Council Member Hanif, you were arrested in October along with a coalition of, of New Yorkers um, calling for a ceasefire in Gaza. Uh, the New York City Council has not passed a ceasefire resolution, though many other cities have. Can you talk about that? You also visited the Columbia student encampment. I did. I've been calling for a ceasefire with many of my colleagues uh, in the Progressive Caucus, primarily. Um, and you're right, a ceasefire resolution has not passed, and I have been vocal about feeling deep disappointment and shame um, by New York City, which, be the, which would be the largest city to demand a ceasefire. However, uh, we are seeing what the results of not um, having a ceasefire resolution um, has yielded uh, students across universities, Columbia, City College. I'm a former uh, Brooklyn College student. Campuses all across New York City uh, are demanding uh, divestment from Israel, a ceasefire, uh, and, uh, and better from their elected officials. Um, and having been to the encampment at Columbia, I witnessed, um, I witnessed an anti-war movement. I witnessed what it means to demand an end to genocide and the killing of Palestinians and demanding the release of all hostages. So we are witnessing New Yorkers, students, young people in their early 20s um, saying this needs to end. Finally, uh, on the issue of immigration, um, uh, can you discuss Mayor Adams um, dealing with asylum seekers? I think something like 200,000 immigrants have come to New York since 2022. You're sponsoring a bill that would repeal the mayor's policy limiting shelter stays for newly arrived asylum seekers to 30 to 60 days, um, uh, if you can explain more. Sure. The the legislation that I've authored is the Stop Shelter Evictions Act. This mayor has uh, demanded a an arbitrary, a cruel cap on how many days asylum seekers um, can stay at a shelter. And what we're witnessing as a result of this counterproductive, again, there's no precedent as to why 30 and why 60 days. 30 days would be for adults, uh, single adults, and 60 days for families with children. And New Yorkers are experiencing now the uptick in street homelessness, many more people in our subways, um, and also school-aid children. A thousand school-aid children have been reported to leave the public school system as a result of these evictions. So my bill would reverse um, this counterproductive policy. We want to thank you so much for being with us. We'll continue to follow that bill. Shahana Hanif is New York City Council member, co-chair of the Progressive Caucus and the Task Force to Combat Hate. She's the first Bangladeshi-American New York City Council member. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks for joining us.